What is going on guys, Noah Burr here back again with another video and sorry for the low quality of this video. I know it's probably not that bad, but the audio is definitely different than my normal videos and the lighting in here is a little bit weird. So I want to apologize. I am traveling right now. I am in Nashville, Tennessee, currently checking out the city for a couple days before I head over to Long Island and check out the Viral Ecom Ad Studio. But I promise you 100% what is lost in quality during this video is going to be 10x in value because I have an absolute banger of a video talking about TikTok ads and how you can massively improve your cost per purchase and your profitability with your ads today. Now today we're going to be talking about the TikTok ads breakdown tab. Now I don't think I've seen many people talk about this and it is something that I have been using kind of low key. I haven't talked about it either on my channel. So this is the first video that I'm making about it. Now I have made videos about the Facebook ad breakdown tab, which if you want to get an idea for what a breakdown tab is and how to use it, that's a great video to watch. But for this video is going to be specifically about the TikTok ads breakdown tab. So if you're primarily running TikTok ads, this is the video that you're going to want to watch. So the first thing that I want to cover is what is a breakdown tab? So a breakdown tab essentially allows you to break down or separate the data inside of your ads, essentially the data that your ads are collecting. So in the back end of TikTok, they're actually collecting data on like what age groups, what genders, you know, what countries, locations, devices, the people that are seeing your ads are actually coming from. And there is a way that you can see this individual data, which I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do that in this video. And I'm also going to be giving you some recommendations on how you can use it to your advantage and actually see an increase ROAS using this method. So essentially you can see different information inside of your ad targeting individually. That way you can target these audiences individually. So for example, if your audiences are primarily targeting 18 plus, um, this way you'll be able to see a breakdown of all the age groups between, you know, 18 to 24, 24 to 35, you know, so that you can see which age group is the most profitable. And I'll show you a perfect example of this towards the end of this video. So why is the breakdown tab so useful? Well, in general, it's a known fact that with paid advertising, the thing that makes it so valuable is the data. You're not just paying for people to see your ad, you're paying for tracked conversions and you're paying to know where those sales come from. This is what the breakdown tab allows you to do. It allows you to see exactly where the sales are coming from. That way you can do, make kind of like hyper targeted ads based on real data. Of course, this can also be helpful for fulfillment and customer service. And once you become a lot bigger of a brand, the breakdown tab becomes a whole lot more useful for logistical stuff at the surface level. It's super valuable for just being able to narrow down your targeting, giving you new ideas on new campaigns and ad sets that you can actually go out and test. For example, you can have a $20 cost per purchase in Canada, but a $50 cost per purchase in the USA. If you never broke down your ads, and actually looked at the individual data for each country, you would never know this information. You would just think that your average cost per purchase was you know, $40 and there's nothing that you could do about it, when in reality, you're losing money by running ads in the United States when you could just run ads in Canada and be profitable out the gate. So something to note that I wanna say that I think is worth you know, coming from the perspective of somebody who's used this breakdown tab a lot, it's really easy to hype this and be like, oh my God, this is the craziest thing in advertising you know, since sliced bread or whatever, but it's really not. Sometimes keeping your ads broad actually performs the best and narrowing things down doesn't necessarily mean that your cost per purchase is going to get lower. So while it sounds really, really good in theory, I would encourage you to actually go out there and test this and use it as something to test. Don't super rely your scaling method on this, of course, but it is definitely worth testing. And I have seen it in the past actually bring down the cost per purchase, essentially forcing your cost per purchase to go down just because you're looking at real data. But I did want to say that this is not the holy grail number one secret to advertising because that doesn't exist. And you have to keep an open mind here. And sometimes 18 to 24 will just work really, really good because it works really good for that particular ad set. And there's nothing that you could do about it. There's no way to take more advantage of it. What it really does is give you useful information and ideas for new things that you can test. If those things work out, then that's really, really great. And most of the time I predict that they will work out because the breakdown tab is a really good feature and usually it's pretty accurate. But that's the point of this. The point of this isn't to try to hyper target your ads because I want you to keep in mind that one of the foundations is that with paid advertising that has anything to do with algorithms or optimizing, sometimes leaving it broad is better than doing super narrow targeting. So I just wanted to keep it real and not put any false hype out there that this is something that should be treated as something to be tested 
and if you have a winning product you should definitely be doing it yes but this is not the secret holy grail to how you're going to get a fat ROAS. This is simply just something to test and something that will most likely work, but obviously you have to see for yourself. All right, guys, so my goal with this section of the video is to show you each individual thing that you can break down and actually how to break it down because there's a few different ways inside of the TikTok ads manager that you can do this. So I just wanna make sure that you know each of the different ways so that you can go and utilize this on your own store and ad account. So the first thing is breaking it down by date. This can be useful if you wanna see, you know, different patterns on which days perform really good and whatnot like that. So I'll show you real quick how you can break down by date. So essentially you hover over your campaign and you click view data once you have that all you need to do is scroll down and you can see it's going to show you the results for each different day that this campaign has been running and you can also do this for individual ads and individual ad sets as well so this way you can see you know our monday is doing really good for you and this is kind of helpful information not really at a small scale like this but once you get to a higher scale you can really do some interesting narrow down campaigns on different days and stuff like that um, so i just wanted to add it to this video just in case you were somebody who was going to utilize that. The next one I want to talk about is breaking down by placements and platforms. Now I'm adding this to this video because right now we are primarily targeting TikTok only, but there are a couple other platforms on TikTok that you can target that I think eventually we will try to target. But for now, I'm just going to put it in the video just so that you guys can see kind of what you would do if you were targeting other placements on TikTok. Essentially, you go to the same place and then you just click placements. Very, very simple. And there's even a bunch of different options here that you can you know optimize it for. So you can look at different conversions. And like I said, we're only only targeting TikTok right now. So all of it is going to be TikTok, but you can break down by all these different metrics here. And it's just a really cool feature to get data to create better ads. The next one is age, gender, and age and gender. This is really cool because if you're unfamiliar with the breakdown tab, this is probably going to blow your mind. But what you can do is not only can you break down by age, so you can see which age groups are performing really good. And if we scroll over to the CPA, you can see what I was talking about earlier, how, you know, ages 18 to 24 has a cost per purchase of $27, while ages 25 to 34 has a cost of purchase of $34. So this is gonna average out and still be profitable for the store. But what you can do with this is you can create a campaign or an ad set that's only targeting ages 18 to 24 and try to forcefully bring your cost per purchase down. But we got a little bit off track there, so let's get back on. Not only can you break down by age, but you can also break down by gender. So a lot of people like to speculate and say like, oh, women like this product or men like this product. And the truth is you don't really know until you actually run the product and see for yourself. As you can see for this particular product, it's pretty much even, but you'll see different examples where, you know, male is just so much more profitable and it's wasting a bunch of money on females or, or maybe vice versa, or maybe you thought that the product would only sell to females and it's actually selling to males. This is usually why I don't recommend breaking down by gender from the beginning and just leaving it broad because you can always break it down later and see what the real data is telling you. One of the cool things about Facebook and TikTok is they actually actually allow you to break down by age and gender at the same exact time. So essentially what it does is it overlaps the two. When we break down by age, for example, we can see the average cost per purchase for age group 18 to 24. But what if we want to know, you know, how, what percentage of those people were male, what percentage of those people were female, because what if it's only converting people at a $27 cost per purchase for males, and then maybe it's higher for females. So you can actually mix these two and it's going to show you each age group with the gender group as well. So you can see that we have the two 18 to 24 is right here. We have the male one and we also have the female one and you can see that the female one is actually doing a lot better. So this just kind of allows you to get like a more in-depth look on how your ads are performing in terms of the age and gender. And if it was me, I could create a campaign that's targeting 18 to 24 with female only and give that a shot and see if it performs a lot better. And I may be able to bring down my cost per purchase. The next one is location and sub region. So this is really helpful because I don't know if you guys are just targeting one country, but for us, we try to target United States and Canada for every campaign that we run. And the reason we do that is just to hit as many people as we possibly can. I wouldn't really recommend doing more than that unless you're in another country and you're doing specific targeting for a specific reason. But the way that you break down by country is essentially you just click this little drop down right here, 
country slash region and it's going to tell you and you can see that for this campaign it's actually spent almost all of its money in the united states so if you didn't if you never looked at this you would have no idea other than looking at your shopify and fulfillment data that all of your sales were coming from the us um, and this can also create an opportunity because now i know that these ads have not even ran in canada yet so maybe i can make a campaign targeting only canada and maybe mix it in with some of the other demographic breakdowns that i have and make a super campaign to actually test out canada because from what i'm seeing this product was profitable and it wasn't even spending money in Canada. So that could have been, you know, kind of like an untapped market, something that I wasn't taking advantage of that maybe I should have been. The next one, which I think is really, really interesting because you could not do this on Facebook at all. And that's breaking down by interests and behaviors. I know this is crazy because if you could have done this on Facebook, this would have made us so much more money because it would have given us all these ideas for different interests and, and stuff that we could target that we weren't targeting yet. So the way that you do this is the same exact way. You just go into this little area right here and you can go ahead and click interest and here the cost per purchase is going to be an overlapped cost per purchase so i wouldn't recommend using this as data for seeing which interest performs the best but i would use this as data to see which interests are making sales if that makes any sense you'll know what i'm talking about when you go into your ad account and look at it but the cost per purchase is basically the same for every single one of them so you can't really do back-to-back -back comparisons just because there's a lot of overlap but for example if your only interest in this campaign was games you're going to have all these different interests in here that you can now go Go in and test and you can even see that there's a couple here that are a little bit lower um, so now you have data backed information to where if you make a new campaign testing out new interests you can use this to create maybe a little bit better of a campaign that might have a higher chance of working and not only can you break down by interest but you can also break down by behavior so you can click watch to end which is what i believe we were targeting in this campaign yeah so we were targeting watch to end with 15 seconds that's usually what we do and you can see the same breakdown goes here as well so obviously there's going to be a lot more categories but this could just open up more doors for different behaviors and stuff to test um, and there's another way to do this as well if you come up if you scroll up to the top here you can break it down by interest and behavior and see it kind of from this view um, and they also have different tiers as well so i don't know if you know but when you go to actually target interests and behaviors inside of tiktok there's like different levels to you know like you'll have the overhead one and then you'll have you know three categories under that and then each of those categories will have a category so you can break it down by each category and see you know are the are the bigger audiences doing better are the smaller ones doing better and this is just helpful information for you know creating new campaigns and doing stuff like that the next one is device operating system and device model these are done the same exact way again super easy to do you just come here and you click device model and this is going to tell you you know was it an iphone was it a Samsung, what brands are they carrying? So this is cool, I guess, if you're trying to sell apps or phone cases or anything that has to do with phone accessories, um, you can actually see which ones are performing the best. Maybe if you're selling a phone charger, maybe only people that have iPhones are buying it. And maybe you can look into why that is, target more iPhone owners, whatever you want to do from that point with that information could be helpful information to know nonetheless same thing for the operating system you just come down here scroll down so that's pretty much the most useful things that you can break down by and how you can actually go into your ad account and break them down keep it in mind that you can also do this on your campaign level and you can also do this on your ad set level and your ad level so you can do this on each individual part of your campaign you can't only do it on the campaign level so this becomes really really helpful if you're let's say split testing numerous different advertisements or creatives you can see for example, if one creative performs a lot better for a younger demographic and another creative performs a lot better for an older demographic, that could be an opportunity because now you can target your younger demographic ad to a younger audience and you can target your older demographic ad to an older audience. There's a lot of ways that you can expand on this and I'm gonna be giving you some more ideas in the next slide here. It really is about creativity and just getting in there, looking at the data and just trying to think of things that you can create inside of your ad account that could work very well. And I'm really excited to see some of you go out and implement this and tell me how it goes. And I am also excited to go out and implement this some more with myself because while I have tested it, I used to do it a lot on Facebook and I have tested it with TikTok and it does in fact work. Things always get crazy when I make a video 
about a new strategy or tactic or something and then I, I always get DMs like, hey, like I did this and I'm, you know, 10K a day now, whatever. So obviously I always appreciate the comments, the DMs when you guys reach out and let me know when I give you value and it actually equates to real life money or making an impact on your life. It means a lot to me and that's part of the reason that I make these videos. So a couple ideas on how to actually use this data to your potential. So obviously if you get data on ages, uh, genders, locations, devices, you can go in your ad account and create new campaigns, essentially just replicating the entire campaign. But instead of doing what you did before, you just narrow down by age on the new campaign. So if you were doing 18 plus before in your new campaign, maybe you're only gonna do 18 to 24. This could be a really good way to scale because it could give you a lot of new campaigns to go out and create over the next week or two, you know, where you could create a new campaign every single day that's different and has potential to work. And once you start mixing that with like running new creatives and all this different stuff, like you just have a never ending plethora of things that you can test out and things that you can scale with. Obviously, breaking down interests and behaviors is a great way to go out and find new interests and behaviors to test out in new campaigns. Another kind of strategy that you can use for scaling is something that I like to call break down and scale or narrow down and scale. And essentially what this means is before you try to scale vertically, you basically scale horizontally while narrowing down your ads. So you're narrowing down your ages, your genders, your locations. You're trying to get this thing as optimized and as targeted as possible. And then once you have it performing really, really good and you're not wasting a lot of money on audiences that are not performing, then you scale vertically and you can go really, really big this way. So this is a really good opportunity for you to, you know, basically invest a, you know, a couple weeks of time, create your horizontal scale campaigns. And then once your ads are narrowed down and you figured out exactly what works best for you, then you can go in and start scaling vertically and absolutely crush it. But keep in mind what I said earlier, this isn't the golden goose. This isn't the golden thing that is gonna turn around your ad game and instantly make, you know, triple your profits or anything crazy like that. Because it very well could be the case that leaving your audiences broad is what performs the best but who cares? I think it's worth a test either way. And if it doesn't work, then just scale the original campaigns and leave it broad. I don't think it's a big deal. And I definitely think there's a lot of opportunity with the breakdown tab, especially as TikTok grows as a platform and as I get more experience with it, I'm sure I'll think of way more creative ways to actually utilize it. So that's it for this video. If you want more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe and the bell. It really means a lot to me. My subscriber rate is growing. My video views are growing. It really shows me that the work that I'm putting into these videos is really helpful. I've been working like all day at the airport, on the airplane, creating this video for you today. Obviously I'm busy traveling and I'm having the time of my life. I'm having a great time eating chicken and playing guitar with statues. But nonetheless, I hope this video was super valuable for you. If it was, smash the like button for the algorithm and leave me a comment if you go out and test some of these things. Let me know how it performs. But that's it for this video. This is Noah Brewer and I'm out. Peace.